So this is question 4 from November 2022 from DBE. Okay, question 4.1 is on hyperbola and has got 5 sub-questions. Question 4.2 is on parabola and exponential function. Question 4.2 has got 5 sub-questions as well. Okay, and the total for question 4 is 20 marks. Okay, you can see that. Let's get started on the next slide. Okay, 4.1. And 4.1.1, the question is write down the values of P and Q. Okay, the question is 2 marks. Okay, you can see that. Let me get the question. 4.1 from November 2022. 4.1 is on hyperbola. You can see that. Question 4.1.1 is write down the values of P and Q. The question is 2 marks. Okay. This is the equation that you are given. You need to write down the values of P and Q. Okay. From the graph, you can see that you have a vertical asymptote at X is equal to 1. You can see that. Okay. So you have a vertical asymptote at X is equal to 1. From this, you know that P is equal to the opposite value, which is negative 1. Okay. So you have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1. And from this, you can tell that p is equal to the opposite value. So that is negative 1. If you have 2, it's going to be negative 2. If you have negative 3, it's going to be 3. Okay, so you take the opposite of the value where you have the vertical asymptote. Okay, now to get the value of q, you can tell by the horizontal asymptote. You have the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 2. Okay. So you have the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 2. And from this, you know that q is equal to 2. Okay. So this is how you can write down the values of p and q. Okay. Now let's continue. Now question 4.1.2. The question is calculate the coordinate of the x-intercept of h. Okay, so this is the graph of H. You need to calculate the coordinate of the x-intercept of H. The question is 2 marks. Okay, so the x-intercept, you can see on the graph, the x-intercept is there. But you need to calculate the coordinate of the x-intercept. Okay, you know that to get the x-intercept, you let y equal to 0. Okay, so this is the equation that you are given. H of x is equal to... You have this after replacing your P and Q. You know P is equal to negative 1. And you know that Q is equal to 2. Okay. After replacing the values of P and Q, you have H of X is equal to this. Okay. Now let's get the coordinate of the X-intercept. To get the X-intercept, you let Y equal to 0. H of X is Y. So you let H of X equal to 0. Okay. So this is 0 is equal to what you have there. Okay. Now you carry on. You take the positive 2 to the left. It becomes a negative 2. This is equal to what you have there. Okay. After taking the positive 2 to the left, you have negative 2 is equal to this. Okay. You carry on. Remember, the negative 2 is over 1. Now you can do cross multiplication. Okay. You have negative 2 times this is equal to you have 1 at the bottom times this one okay so you have 1 the one at the bottom times this one so you have 1 times 1 okay so you do cross multiplication and then you carry on you have negative 2 times x which is negative 2x right and then you have negative 2 times negative 1 which is positive 2 okay negative 2 times negative 1, it's positive 2. This is equal to 1. Okay, you can carry on. You have negative 2x, right, is equal to 1. And then you take the positive 2 to the right. Now you have 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Okay, so 1 minus 2, it's minus 1. Now you need to divide by negative 2 on both sides so that you can get the value of x okay when you divide by negative 2 
you have x is equal to you divide the negative 1 by negative 2 you have 1 over 2 okay the negative and the negative cancel and then you have 1 over 2 okay so this is the x coordinate of the x intercept okay so this is how you are going to write you have this is the x coordinate and then the y coordinate is 0 remember at the x intercept the y coordinate is 0 okay so you have to write in coordinate form remember to write in coordinate form when they ask you to calculate the coordinate of the x intercept they want you to write it like this okay let's carry on i can draw a line here now question 4.1.3 the question is write down the x coordinate of the x intercept of g if g of x is equal to h of x plus 3 okay if g of x is equal to h of x plus 3 the question is 2 marks okay so to get g of x you substitute x plus 3 wherever you have x inside what the equation of h of x okay so g of x is equal to h of x plus 3 okay g of x is equal to h of x plus 3 you know that h of x is equal to from the previous question this is h of x h of x is equal to this okay you can see that from the previous question g of x is equal to h of x plus 3 okay to get g of x you substitute x plus 3 wherever you see x okay so let's get g of x g of x is equal to this okay you substitute x plus 3 wherever you see x okay so this is h of x substitute x plus 3 inside h of x wherever you see x to get g of x okay let's do that this is equal to you have 1 over you have x there you are going to substitute x with x plus 3 okay x plus 3 and remember you have minus 1 and then you have plus 2 okay now you have g of x okay now let me close this for now now what they want you to write down is to get what the x coordinate of the x intercept of g if g of x is equal to h of x plus 3 this is g of x if you want to get the x coordinate of the x intercept if you pay attention to the equation of h of x and g of x you can see that there is actually a horizontal translation a translation by three units to the left okay you don't need to do all the calculations you can pay attention to the two equations okay to obtain g of x from h of x there is actually a translation horizontally by three units to the left when there is positive it is to the left when there is negative it is to the right okay remember that from our lessons on hyperbola okay let me say that again when there is positive it is to the left when there is negative it is to the right okay so from this when you shift this hyperbola three units to the left you're going to get this equation okay from h to g you actually shift three units to the left so what you are going to do in order to avoid all the calculations just take this and subtract negative three from this and then you have the x coordinate of the x intercept okay you have the x coordinate of the x intercept for h is equal to this you can see that now to get for g you subtract three because you have a shift to the left by three units remember positive it is to the left so you have negative three right so now this is the x coordinate of the x intercept for g in order to avoid all the calculations of letting y equal to zero to get the x intercept you can just subtract three from this and then you have the x coordinate of the x intercept of g okay and this is going to give you you have this is a half minus 3 right this is negative 2.5 okay this is a half minus 3 this is negative 2.5 and i can write it as a fraction this is going to be negative 5 over 2 
Okay, so remember this is negative 2.5. This is a half minus 3, which is negative 2.5, and I can write it as a fraction. Okay, and I have the x coordinate of the x intercept of g. Okay, so this is how you can solve it. Okay, now let's move on to the next question 4.1.4. The question is the equation of an axis of symmetry of h is y is equal to x plus t. Determine the value of t. And the question is 2 max. Okay, remember again, h is a hyperbola and you are requested to get the value of t and you have y is equal to x plus t. This is the equation of the axis of symmetry of a hyperbola. Okay, so you are given y is equal to x plus t. The question is to find the value of t. Okay, you have a point on the axis of symmetry. How can you get that point? You can get it by looking at the graph or by looking at the equation of the graph. This is the equation of the graph, the equation of h. Okay, so from this, you have the x coordinate, which is 1 when you solve, right? It's 1. And the y coordinate is 2. Okay. You get the coordinate of this point from the equation. Okay. The x coordinate is 1 when you solve. And the y coordinate is 2. Okay. So this point lies on the axis of symmetry. On both axes of symmetry. The one with positive gradient and the one with negative gradient. Okay. Please check my lesson on hyperbola. You are going to understand this. Okay, now I can use this point to get the value of t. Okay, remember the first coordinate is x and the second coordinate is y. Okay, let me use this point to get the value of t. This is y. y is 2. This is equal to x. x is 1. And then plus t. Okay, from this, t is equal to when you take 1, to the left now you have 2 minus 1 okay so t is equal to 1 because 2 minus 1 is 1 okay so this is the value of t t is equal to 1 okay let's carry on let me draw a line here so now it's question 4.1.5 the question is determine the values of x for which negative 2 is less than or equal to 1 over x minus 1. The question is 3 max. Okay. Determine the values of x for which negative 2 is less than or equal to 1 over x minus 1. Okay. This is the equation that you are given. The question is to determine the values of x. Okay. So you are given negative 2 is less than this. Okay. This is what you are given. Before we can try to determine the values of x, what we have to do is to rearrange this equation. Okay, let me do that. I have 1 over x minus 1, right? 1 over x minus 1. I can take this negative 2 to the right. It becomes plus 2, right? And then I have this. And I remain with 0 on the left side. Okay, so I'm trying to rearrange this equation Okay, now, from this, if I pay attention to the equation, I can see that this is actually the equation of the graph of H. You can see, you have 1 over, can you see from question 4.1.2, you have 1 over X minus 1 plus 2. This is the same, but you have greater than or equal to 0. When you read from right to the left, you have this, greater than or equal to 0, right? If you read from right to the left. Now you can see that this is actually the equation of the hyperbola. The hyperbola, the graph of H. You can see what we have there. Can you see? Okay. Okay, what we have to do is to look at the graph of H and you can be able to answer this question. Okay, let me get the graph of H from the question. It's question 4.1. So this is the graph of H. Now the question is, this is H. When H 
is greater than or equal to zero, determine the values of x, right? When h, this is h, is greater than or equal to zero, determine the values of x for which this is greater or equal to zero. If you can read from right to the left, you have the graph of h is greater than or equal to zero. You can see this is the equation of the graph of h. You have it there. Can you see? It's the same. And you have it drawn here. Can you determine the values of x? Okay. Where is the graph greater than or equal to zero? The graph is equal to zero when it's cutting or when it's touching the x-axis. So the graph is zero there and it is greater than zero when it is above the x-axis. Okay. So from there, it is greater than zero and equal to zero when it is touching the x-axis. And when it is below the x-axis, it is less than zero. Okay. So it is less than zero there. And it is also greater than zero there because it is above the x-axis. Okay. So from negative infinity up to this point, you can see that this point is actually a half. Can you remember from the question, this is actually the x-intercept a half, right? You calculated for the x-intercept. So you have a half there, right? So the graph is greater than zero from there and equal to zero there. Okay, so this point is included because you have equal to zero. So that point is included. And then after that, you start from one all the way to positive infinity. The graph is greater than zero. So on this part, the graph is less than zero. So you are not going to take these values in between a half and one. These values are not included because the graph is less than zero on this part. So only from negative infinity all the way to a half, you include a half because you have equal. So at that point, the graph is equal to zero where the graph is touching the x-axis. So greater than zero and then zero. It is equal to zero. And then you have there greater than zero, but you have it less than zero there. So the question is to get it when it is greater or equal to zero. So I can try to write it if I want like this. So that you can read from left to the right. Okay. So this and this is still the same. If you read from right to the left, you can see this is greater than or equal to zero. Or you can read this from left to the right. You have this greater than or equal to zero. Now you can see clearly that this is a hyperbola, the graph of H. Okay. So you have it greater than or equal to zero from negative infinity. So you can write it as X element of from negative infinity, right? You start from negative infinity. It is greater than zero and it is equal to zero at that point, which is a half. Okay. And remember that point is included because at that point, the graph is equal to zero, right? You have equal to zero. So this point is included. You have to show that with a square bracket. Okay. Union. You carry on. Now from one to positive infinity, the graph is greater than zero, right? Greater than zero from one to positive infinity. So one is not included because the graph is not touching the x-axis at one. It's only touching the x-axis at a half. Okay. So one is not included. So you are going to show that with a round bracket. One is not included. Okay. All the way to positive infinity. Okay. A round bracket. You don't have to put a square bracket because you don't know what infinity is. Infinity means it still continue. You show that with a round bracket. Okay. So this is how you can answer this question. Okay. Or alternatively, you can write it as X less than or equal to a half. Okay. You have this. Or X greater than one. Okay. 
So greater than 1, you have this part. X less than or equal to a half, you have this part. Okay, you have equal day because a half is included. You don't have equal day because 1 is not included. Okay, so you can give the answer like this or like this. So you have two options here. Okay, now let's carry on. Let's continue with question 4.2. Okay, let me do that on the next slide. Now it's question 4.2. Okay, let me get the question again. Question 4.2 from November 2022. Okay, let me read the question. 4.2, the graphs of f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 and g of x is equal to a times 2 to the power of x plus q are sketched below. E and H are the X intercept of F. C is the Y intercept of F and lies on the asymptote of G. The two graphs intersect at D, the turning point of F. Okay, so you can see the graph of F is a parabola. You can see that. Okay, and you have E and H. E and H are the X intercept of F. F is a parabola. Okay. E and H are the X intercept of F. C is the Y intercept of F. Okay. There's C, the Y intercept of F. And C lies on the asymptote of G. Okay. So this is the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote of the graph of G. Okay. The graph of G is an exponential function. Okay. D is what? Is the turning point. Okay. And it is also the point of intersection between the graph of G and the graph of F. Okay. The graph of F and the graph of G intersect at D, which is also the turning point of F. Okay. Now question 4.2.1. The question is write down the y coordinate of c okay this question is one mark okay write down the y coordinate of c this question is one mark you can see there's c c is the y intercept of f okay the graph of f c is the y intercept of f from the equation you can see from the equation of f this is the graph of f from the equation of f which is a parabola it is given in standard form in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so this is the y-intercept, which is negative 5. Okay, from this, you can see that the y-coordinate of this point, which is the y-intercept, this is the y-intercept of the graph of f. From this, the y-coordinate is negative 5. Okay, you can see that from the equation. So the graph of f is cutting the y axis at negative 5. You can see that from the equation of f. Okay, so I can write down the y coordinate. The y coordinate of c is equal to negative 5. Okay, so this is the y coordinate of the point c. Okay, now question 4.2.2. The question is determine the coordinate of d. Right? This question is 2 marks. Determine the coordinate of D. There's D. D is the turning point of F. Right? The turning point of F is D. This is what you are told. And D is also the point of intersection between the graph of F and the graph of G. So to get the coordinate of the turning point, what you can do is to use calculus. You can use the first derivative or you can use the formula x is equal to negative b over 2a. Okay, so you are given f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, you are given it there. So you can use calculus. You take the first derivative or you can use this formula to get the x coordinate of the turning point. The turning point is d. Okay, this is the formula x is equal to negative b over 2a okay so from this 
you know that A is equal to 1. There is an invisible one there. So A is equal to 1. And B is equal to negative 4. You can see that from the equation. And C is equal to negative 5. Okay. So you have A, B, and C. Okay. Just like in alphabetical order. A, B, C. Okay. A is 1. B is negative 4. And C is equal to negative 5. Okay. Let's use this formula to get the x coordinate of the turning point, which is D. Okay. So x, the x coordinate of the turning point is equal to negative B. So you have negative B. B is negative 4. Right? Over 2A. A is 1. Okay. So now you have, this is 4 over 2. And this is equal to 2. So you have 4 over 2 is equal to 2. Now you have the x coordinate of the turning point. To get the y coordinate of the turning point, you take this value, you plug inside the original equation. Okay? So you are going to take f of 2. Right? You take this value, you plug in there to get the y coordinate of the turning point. Okay? So you are going to take f of 2. Let's do that. This is equal to, you have x squared. x is 2 squared. Okay? You plug 2 wherever you see x. Okay? Minus 4 times x. x is 2. And then minus 5. Okay? So this is equal to, this is negative 8, negative 5. Right? This is negative 13. Okay? Negative 8, negative 5. This is negative 13. This is 4. So you have 4 minus 13. This is minus 9. Okay? 4 minus 13. This is minus 9. Okay? So now you have the y coordinate of the turning point. Okay? And so the coordinate of the point D, which is the turning point R, you have 2 and negative 9. Okay? Remember, the first coordinate is always x. And the second coordinate is always y. And so, this is how you can get the coordinate of the turning point of a parabola. Let's carry on. Now, question 4.2.3. The question is, determine the values of A and Q. This question is 3 marks. Okay? Determine the values of A and Q. So, you have A. Can you see in the equation of G? And you have Q. Right? In the equation of G. This is the equation of an exponential function. This is the exponential function. Okay? We are requested to determine A and Q. Okay? Let's do that. You can see the graph of G has got a horizontal asymptote at the point C. And you know that it's cutting way at negative 5. If you can remember from the previous question. Question 4.2.1. Can you see? The y coordinate is negative 5. So you know that this horizontal asymptote is cutting the y axis at negative 5. You can see. So this is negative 5. You can see that. So from this, the graph of G as a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 5. Okay? So, it's cutting the y-axis at negative 5. And from this, you know that Q, the letter Q, represents the value of what? Of the horizontal asymptote. So, you know that Q is equal to negative 5. Okay? So, wherever there is a horizontal asymptote, when you are dealing with an exponential function, that will be your Q. If you have a horizontal asymptote at 1 or 0 or 10 or any value, that will be the Q you have there. Okay? So you know that wherever you have a horizontal asymptote, as in this case, you have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 5. You can see. 
Now from this, you know that Q is equal to minus 5. So this is the value of Q. And now we are left to find the value of A. Okay. So what we can do is to get a point, any point on the graph of G, so that we can get the value of A. Okay. We can use this point, the point D. It is also on the graph of G. We can use it to find the value of A. So we have the coordinate. So G of X is equal to A times 2 to the power of X plus Q. Now you have the value of Q, which is negative 5. Okay. Now let's use this point to get the value of A. Okay. Because this point is also on the graph of G. You can see the point D is on the graph of G. We can use it to get the value of A. Okay. So the point D with this coordinate, this point is or lies on the graph of G. We can use it to get the value of A. Okay. Let's do that. Remember this is your X. It's 2. And your Y is negative 9. Okay. So G of X is Y. Right? Negative 9 is equal to A times 2 to the power of X. X is 2. Okay. 2 to the power of 2. Right? Because X is 2. This is Y. Okay. Remember minus 5. Okay. Now you have this. You can take negative 5 to the left. It becomes positive 5. Now you have 5 minus 9, which is minus 4. Okay. This is equal to A times, this is 4, right? A times 4, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Okay. So to get A, what we have to do is to divide by 4 on both sides. When you divide by 4, you have A is equal to negative 1. Okay. So this is the value of A. Okay. When you divide by 4 on both sides, you have A is equal to negative 1. Okay. We can carry on. Let me draw a line here. Okay. Now it's question 4.2.4. The question is write down the range of G. This question is one mark. Okay. Write down the range of G. G is an exponential function. The range, to obtain the range, you always take all the values of y that exist on the y-axis for this function. Okay, let me say that again. To get, to write down the range of a function, the range of a graph, you take all the values of y that exist for the graph. Okay, you can see this graph still continue down, right? It's not stopping here. So it's going all the way to negative infinity. But when you go up, it's stopping at that point where you have the horizontal asymptote. So at negative 5, remember, at negative 5, you have the horizontal asymptote. So the range is obtained on the y-axis. You take all the values of y that exist for this graph. Okay, so from negative infinity all the way to negative 5. So negative 5 is not included because this graph is not touching this line. It's only approaching this line, which is a horizontal asymptote. So negative 5 is not included. So you have to show that with a round bracket. Okay, so the range is y element of, so it is y not x because it is on the y axis so you have y element of from the bottom you always start from the bottom to the top from the bottom you have negative infinity all the way to 5 so the graph is not crossing it's only approaching this line this horizontal asymptote which is cutting the y axis at negative 5. So it is from negative infinity all the way to negative 5. And you show that with a round bracket. 
because negative 5 is not included. You can see that this graph is not touching this horizontal asymptote. It's only approaching this horizontal asymptote. So you always start from the bottom to the top when you take the range of a graph. When you take the domain, you start from left to the right. When it is the range from the bottom to the top. Okay. I can also write the range as y less than negative 5. Okay. All these values less than negative 5. They are part of the range of the graph of G. Okay. So you have two options. You can give your answer like this or like this. Okay. Let's carry on. Now it's question 4.2.5. The question is determine the values of K for which the value of f of x minus k will always be positive. Okay. Remember f of x is a parable. You are given it. It's a parable. Now the question is to determine the values of k for which the value of f of x minus k will always be positive. Okay. You can see when the parabola is below the x-axis, it is negative. When it is above the x-axis, it is positive. When it is touching the x-axis, there it is zero. Okay, it is zero there, zero there, and when it is below, it is negative. When it is above, it is positive. Okay, but you have to get the values of k for which this will always be positive. There are many ways in which you can solve this question. Okay, I'm going to use the discriminant to solve this question. Okay, let me show you that. Let me close this. Remember, we are dealing with a parabola. Okay, f of x is a parabola. Okay, remember that we are dealing with a parabola. I'm going to use the discriminant to solve this question. You can use other methods. Okay, for now, I'm going to use the discriminant to solve this question. Let me close this. Okay. So this question is 2 max. Okay. You are given f of x minus k. Okay. f of x minus k. And this is equal to, you have f of x there. I can write it like x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay. And minus k. This is what you are given. Okay. You can use the discriminant or any other method to solve this question. Okay. Let me remind you about the discriminant. But you don't have to do this in the exam. I'm going to use the discriminant. For now, let me remind you about the discriminant. This is the discriminant. When the discriminant is greater than zero, this is what you have to know. When the discriminant is greater than zero, you are going to have the parabola touching the x-axis at two points. Okay? At two different points. When the discriminant is greater than zero, you are going to have the parabola touching the x-axis at two different points. Okay? Remember, we are dealing with a parabola. Okay? This is a parabola. When the discriminant is greater than zero, you are going to have the parabola touching the x-axis at two different points. Remember that about the discriminant. Okay. So let me show you that. For example, you can have something like this. You can see this parabola is touching the x-axis at two different points. At that point and at that point. Okay. This will happen when you have the discriminant greater than zero. It can be concave up. Or concave down. Let me say that in other words. It can be a smiling parabola. Or a frowning parabola. As long as it's touching the x-axis at two points. This can only happen when the discriminant is greater than zero. Okay. Let's keep that in mind. When the parabola is below the x-axis. It is negative. So this part which is below the x-axis. It is negative. 
when it is above it is positive so it is positive there positive there but negative there when it is below above positive below negative there the parabola is zero where it's touching or cutting the x-axis okay remember that another case is when you have the discriminant equal to zero when you have the discriminant equal to zero you are going to have a parabola touching the x-axis only at one point when the discriminant is equal to zero you are going to have the parabola touching the x-axis only at one point for example this one you can see this parabola is touching the x-axis only at one point so it can be like this concave up or concave down as long as it's touching the x-axis at one point so this can only happen when the discriminant is equal to zero okay another case is when the discriminant is less than zero when it is less than zero you are going to have the parabola not touching the x-axis at all not touching the x-axis at all for example this parabola is not touching the x-axis at all you can see this is the x-axis and this parabola is not touching the x-axis at all because the discriminant is less than zero so you can have it as concave up or concave down but it must not touch the x-axis when the discriminant is less than zero now in this case we are dealing with a parabola which is concave up or a smiling parabola right in this case because you can see the value of a is one so you understand that the value of a is positive so we are dealing with a parabola which is concave up okay so which case is going to answer this question okay you can tell that this is the case that is going to answer this question because we are requested to have f of x minus k always positive right f of x minus k always positive this will give us the graph the parabola positive you can see the parabola is entirely positive because it is completely above the x-axis so it is positive every way so you have b squared right b squared b is negative 4 right squared minus 4 a c a is 1 right you have an invisible one there c c is negative 5 negative k so this is a constant negative 5 negative k is the constant okay so this is c negative 5 negative k less than zero and from this you can solve for k okay and you have the answer so we are using this one because this case is getting the parabola entirely positive okay let's do that this is 16 and then you have negative 4 right negative 4 times negative 5 this is positive 20 right negative 4 times negative 5 this is positive 20 and then you have negative 4 times negative k this is positive 4k okay i hope you can see that and you have less than zero okay we carry on this is 36 right plus 4k less than zero okay we carry on you have 4k less than you take 36 to the right it's negative 36 okay 36 to the right it's negative 36 okay we carry on you divide by 4 on both sides so that you can solve for k by 4 you have k less than negative 36 by 4 you have negative 9 okay for all the values less than negative 9 this is going to be always positive okay so this is how you can solve the question okay we are done with question 4 from november 2022 i hope this video was helpful okay until next time i will talk to you soon